The first Marvel Cinematic Universe film of the year has finally dropped, officially kicking off the superhero films of 2018. And it's a spoiler review today, meaning some spoilery stuff will probably make its way in here. After that first trailer, everyone was super pumped from the glimpses of Wakanda we got. Even the music choice was A1. The music had everyone going Racist bus, racist bus. But a chocolate flavor. Black Panther sees the return of Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa, King of Wakanda. But when some dude he had beef with in the past comes back, the heart of his home country and its very own people are put in danger. And you know, he's gotta save the day and such. Back in 2013, I just remember having this as my wallpaper for a while. No lives for life. I wanted a Black Panther movie so badly. The story was just too much to miss out on. It took a whole new spin on this popular view of a country that's usually associated with poverty and just flipped the whole system. And his suit just looked really cool. The entire cast brought their A-game for this one. Specifically Chadwick Boseman. The character of T'Challa is all about being the wise and smart one and always acting so philosophical. So his character could have been easily written as an emotionless robot being as interesting as a sack of bricks. But Chadwick brings a sense of humanity to him. The way he conveys anger and affection allows him to find the perfect balance between the man and the king. And deny Gurira, yo. She just made it feel like her character could break Bane with a bag of taquitos. The writing was also phenomenal for this film, especially the material that's given to Eric Killmonger. That was one of the strongest intros to any villain I've seen in a long time. Like he was just having a civil conversation with someone at the art museum, and then he pulled a historical racism card in defense mode out of nowhere. Like how? That escalated so quickly. The poor woman didn't deserve that. She just works there, my guy. Then Claw came in with his henchmen and they all died. The director did an excellent job of establishing this foreign place from scratch. All the visuals and the creative use of technology were all great stuff. It's really interesting to think about the whole thing on how they've built Wakanda. You saw in the movie of how they got inside Wakanda. You fly right through a forest mountain. But do you have to be in that ship for it to work or something? I mean like, do random people that are walking on the ground that don't know about Wakanda's secrets, do they just glitch out of the map when they step inside? We'll probably find out more about it in future movies. By far one of my favorite scenes though, was in the very beginning when T'Chaka confronts the other two dudes. The guy who played young Forrest Whitaker, I don't know what it was, he just looked like he woke up in the middle of filming. I don't know if that was intentional. And then later in the film, we learned that he was actually a spy for the spy, spying on the spy for spying purposes. And when his friend first learns that, I swear it made me think of- But it's not you that's got me, it's- Man, it's got me. There are a few kinks here and there. There are times when the movie feels fast paced and you're totally in it. Then it takes a while for the gears to start moving again. And then it gets back in motion. There wasn't much of a problem. It's just that maybe the movie could have been trimmed down a little bit. Some of the visual effects made some scenes look like Black Panther was made out of Play-Doh, but most of them were all right. And this next thing isn't a bad thing, but why did they have to kill everyone? It looked like Andy Serkis' character was gonna be Black Panther's version of Loki, where they'd keep him around for a bit to act as the foil and antithesis of T'Challa. But nah, he gets thrown in a duffel bag an hour in. Maybe they're establishing Eric as the go-to villain. He's pretty great anyways. Then they killed Eric himself, and then you're just sitting there like, WHY DID YOU LEAVE ME?! I understand that it wouldn't have fit Eric's character if he were taken captive. Especially since he gave that speech right before he died, saying that he'd rather be dead than be bondaged. But I mean, it's a shame that they didn't even keep Andy Serkis. They were both great characters played by great actors, and both of them are just one and done. It works as a standalone movie, and that's all that really matters in the end. It's just, if they could have found a way to keep one of them alive for future installments, I think it could have made the ending feel more defining. But the amazing action scenes and cinematography make up so much for what little flaws it had. There's this one long take in the casino where T'Challa is with his bodybuilding friends and the camera just smoothly pans from second floor to first floor to second floor again, making you feel like you're actually there watching everyone kicking each other through tables and floors. 
I especially loved this shot of when Eric first gets crowned as king and the camera starts upside down and slowly rotates back to the correct viewing, symbolizing how the world of Wakanda has just turned upside down now that Eric is at the seat and that nightmare is just fixating itself into reality. One thing I thought I wasn't going to like about the film, but I ended up really not minding, was Black Panther's costume. I'm still a little iffy on the new suit, but it's actually really growing on me. In the movie, it's clearly much more practical than the last one. It's got so much more gizmos and gadgets. I promise you, I heard someone crying beside me when this money shot happened, but cosmetically, I just really loved the old one in comparison. The patterns all over the body and the silver lining accent marks on his helmet made the suit feel simple yet complex at the same time. I get why they had to change it up. It's a movie about T'Challa. Of course he's gonna get upgrades. The proportions looked a little jarring on the old one. Whenever he took his mask off, the padding on his traps was just so much, it just looked like a hunk of meat below his head. He didn't even have a neck. There was also no soul stone at all in Wakanda. So to all of you who kept sending me these... The mid credit scene showed Black Panther revealing the truth of Wakanda to the world, and the post credit scene showed Bucky, who looked a lot like Jesus, rising in Wakanda. I honestly thought that the mid credit scene one could have been attached to the actual ending of the film, but actually thinking about it now, it might have felt weird. The ending before the mid credits showed him smirking at a kid for asking a question, and the other one had him smirking at a bunch of politicians for asking a question. They basically had the same message. If it was added before the credits, it would have looked like the people behind the movie couldn't make a choice on which shot they liked better, so they just slapped it together. That would have made it feel like mixing hot soup and ice cream. Both are pretty good on their own, but if you mix them together in a single bowl, you might need to see a doctor. I was incredibly biased walking into this movie. Black Panther is one of my favorite superheroes of all time, right beside Nightwing and Spider-Man. So I was gonna like this film whether it was even just okay, but as a film, it's amazing. The acting, directing, and talent they got for this project was a recipe for success. And for the most part, they nailed the blending of the action and visual effects. The biggest thing this movie has to offer is its storytelling. The narrative and visual shots the director Ryan Coogler chooses to set up Wakanda as this utopian Afro-futuristic world all around works. I'd say this film is Oscar worthy. You deserve an award bro. I'd probably rank this as my fourth or fifth favorite MCU film. The first Avengers is still at the top, followed by Civil War, then Winter Soldier, and then this movie, or Spider-Man Homecoming, or Thor Ragnarok. I'm still not sure. They're kind of tied for me. But I want to hear what you have to say about Black Panther. Did you like the film? Let me know your own thoughts down in the comment section below. And hey, if you really like this video, then be sure to tap that like and subscribe button. Also, come on over and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And for more of my videos, just click right here.